Starting off tonight with Moon Tower American Stout from Sucrums Brewing in Winnipeg. They describe it as having heavy malt flavors, a coffee-like aroma, and a hint of rich dark chocolate in the taste. But those tastes all come from the brewing process. This just has the standard uh, five beer ingredients in it. Very cool. Well, that's nice. Not quite as heavy as a traditional Irish stout, but I like it. So today I am going to do a nice chilled out kit build. It's been ridiculously hot outside and I feel like retreating to the basement with a nice cold beer. So here we are. Um, this bag here is the kits that came in the massive box of stuff that Joey gifted me a while ago. And I think I am going to do this kit here with the long skinny circuit board in it. Before we look at the schematic, let's just take a closer look at this board. We have 19 LEDs lined up along the side there. We have six ICs, some very big capacitors, a bunch of resistors and stuff. Chips are all LM358, which are op amps. Wait a minute. This sounds too familiar. I dug around in my a uh, shelf of completed kits and I found that I have in fact done this one before. The board is ever so slightly different. Um, it's set up for a different uh, potentiometer but other than that it's the same. So I am going to go back into my box of kits and back into the bag of kits that Joey sent me and grab this surface mount kit. I'm pretty sure I haven't done that one before. Let me just clean up the desk and we'll reset from the false start. So it's got a bunch of different sizes of components on it, which I guess probably means it's intended as one of those soldering practice kits. But it's also got a couple of chips on it, and I suspect those chips and these LEDs here and here probably do something when you put voltage onto it. I'm going to hope they do anyway. The resistors look like they are all just in series, I think. Yeah, they're all just in series, so they're just acting as one big resistor. Yeah, even these resistor arrays, maybe? I'm not sure what all the parts are. And there's more resistors down there, and we have multiple different sizes of components, too. So this is going to be a challenge. I think I'm going to use this circuit board holder that I haven't used for quite some time. This one is specifically designed for surface mount work. It holds the board nicely, and if you don't have to flip the board over, then, yeah, that's a good thing. But I think I will also, just to increase my chances of success, put the smallest tip on my iron that I have. Um, this is a T12BL for anyone who is an aficionado of soldering tips. Let's just quickly go through the assortment of parts. I'm going to guess, since there's no schematic or anything, that the only way to tell what goes where is by the part count and the physical size. So we have these 101 resistors, which is 10 plus 10, so 100 ohms. We have these much smaller resistors that, even with magnification, I can't read. We have these 3301, which I assume are resistors. We have these. I want to say it's a 1 to... I can't even read that either. Wow. I'm not doing well here. We have these little LEDs. We have these much bigger little LEDs. Here are some resistor arrays, which is kind of neat. I've never seen those in surface mount before. Um, 120 ohms, I guess. 12 and 10. And there's the two chips that are called out on the circuit board. 74HC138. 74HC138 is an 8-line decoder demultiplexer, inverter and or non-inverting, depending on which version you've got. Okay. And a CD4060. 
and the CD4060 is a 14 stage ripple carry binary counter divider and oscillator. Okay, so just by process of elimination and counting components and looking at the sizes, I think I've got it figured out where everything goes. These unmarked ones, I'm pretty sure, are capacitors. It says C1 through C10 there, and the count is right. These resistors all seem to fit in with the right numbers in the right places, so I think I actually have a plan. Now then, do I start from the smallest and go big, or do I start with something a bit more comfortable sized and deal with uh, the small ones once I get a little bit of practice in? I think that might be what I'm going to do. I'll start with these resistors here, which is this bunch here, and then go from that. I am definitely going to need some tweezers for this job. I don't know whether I want the reverse acting ones or the standard ones, or do I want the straight ones? Well, I'm pretty sure I do want the ceramic tip ones, not metallic tip ones. I don't want the heat being sucked away from my workspace here. So I think the first move is to just tin one pad on each one of these. I am actually doing this through the camera, which means I'm zoomed in as much as you guys are. But it also means that I don't have any binocular vision. So I don't have any depth perception. So far, so good. The next step, I guess, is to take the cover film off these guys. At least a little bit. So that I can start getting them put in place. And hopefully I don't create disaster here. Right, let's get at it. Oh, this is harder than I remember. Okay. That is roughly in place. Tack that in down. I think that's that's ugly as sin, but I think it's electrically fine. I just have to repeat that a bunch more times. that's the first nine resistors put on and yes it's ugly but as ugly as they are I think they're all electrically valid connections so each of these resistors looks like it's about a 3.2k or 3.3k and as I go through them six nine and all the way through the whole chain 29 and a half K so I think I think I've got them all together. Now, what next? Should I try those itty bitty capacitors right beside them? Where are those guys? These ones, I think. Yeah, 10 of them. And again, I will just uh, tin one pad on each of them. That method seems to work fairly well, so I'm just going to continue doing it. Probably the best move would be to use solder paste and the heat gun, but all the solder paste that I've currently got has dried up from lack of use over however long I've had it. So I will just do it this way. Although I may reserve the right to use the heat gun just to smooth everything out at the end. 
Just kind of give it one big reflow bath. You could probably actually do that with an oven or something, but ain't got one of those. So, well, I mean, I do, but it's in the kitchen and that's where I cook my pizza. So I don't really want to be soldering in it, you know? Wow, those are tiny. I don't even know what size those things really are. Again, I am doing this through the camera because I can't see that close. But by doing it through the camera, it means I don't have any binocular vision. So, this could get interesting. I think that's in place. Now then, all these capacitors are in parallel. So for the circuit to work, it really doesn't matter how many that I get in there. But, the point of this circuit is to practice my surface mount soldering. So I shall persevere. there's the capacitors and again it's not a pretty job of soldering but I'm fairly confident that there's no short circuits and that they are all actually electrically connected right two sets of components down what's next so you may have noticed that I switched from using the um, ceramic tips to this set of iFixit tweezers. They have a much sharper point on them um, and I'm not losing too much heat in them so I think I'm going to carry on with those guys for a while longer. Okay so I think this is the next set of resistors to go in. Judging by my count they go there in series with these little LEDs down here. This is going to be a little bit awkward, just how close they are to each other. I'm not sure what order I'm going to do these in. What do you think makes sense? I think what will work best is if I pretend the ones that are in between. And then do the rough soldering out here. Order of operations seems to be a big deal for these things just so that you don't get yourself completely screwed up let's see if those all connected properly so these ones were hard to read when they were coming out of the package, but they look like they're about 180 ohms each. 360 across both of them. That's good. I seem to have got an electrical connection to all of them. So what is next? Let's... Well, there's one more set of resistors, but I'm going to change pace and I'm going to try and do these little 8 pin resistor arrays that go over here. I don't know, but I assume the move with these one is going to be very similar to tin one pad. If I can get at it, these are even smaller pads. Oh man. This is going to be difficult to just hit one pad at a time. I am going to be causing some bridges here, I think. So things that I'm learning already is that a super clean tip is really important and that I think that solder wick is going to be my friend. Let's see what happens. How does that look? Not lined up at all. Right. Try again. Hard part is seeing what I'm doing and seeing the angle that my iron is working at here. I'm sure there's a trick for people who are experienced at this. So I think what I'm going to try and do here is get some solder onto all of those pins and then drown it with flux. Way too much. Perfect. And then, once it's all fluxed up and happy, get in there with the hot air gun 
and try and reflow it and hopefully the surface tension moves it into position. And so that's what usually happens when you're refilling hot air, isn't it? Too much solder and I got a couple of bridges in there. But at least the chip's aligned. Now to get rid of bridges, I will use braid and to give me some chance of success, I'll put a little bit of extra flux onto the braid, just for good measure. It's ugly, but I think it worked. So I think I found a method that I can make work here. It's not pretty but I think it will do the job. So I did find some solder paste that has gone dry, but I've loosened it back up again with some alcohol. And then I've been applying it far too liberally to the pads here. But hopefully with the alcohol in there acting like a sort of a flux, I can get it to work. Um, I'm going to drop my resistor array onto there and roughly position it. Roughly. And this is the one problem that I have found with it. These resistor arrays weigh so little that until the solder starts softening, they literally blow around. But once the solder starts softening a little bit, it kind of surface tensions onto the pads and away from the solder mask. And it mostly solders down my little resistor arrays. And then once it's cooled down enough to look at, it's not pretty. There's a little bit of stray solder sitting on the mask, but that knocks off fairly easy with the cleaning. I think that's pretty darn good for somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And 480. Good. So that is nine of those ten little resistor arrays put on there. That's excellent, and they're all conducting properly. The downside of using the hot air and my general chaotic nature around here is that I have managed to lose one of those little bastards. So I don't know what to do about it. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion though that with these resistors are all basically just in series. They're all 120 ohm resistors. I think if I just jump her across there, it will probably be okay. It will definitely not be ideal, but I think we can live with it. I get to practice another skill, bodge wire adding. Successfully, if not artfully, bodge. Don't look too close. No, seriously, don't look too close. So next, I guess we'll throw in the 100 ohm resistors, which if my count is right, go in these positions down here. Those should be just as straightforward to put in as the other resistors. Be nice to take a break from these weird eight pin chips. They're difficult. That was not pleasant. But I am, as I said at the beginning, practicing my skills and hopefully by the end of this, getting better at this surface mount stuff. Right. all that's left now is the LEDs and the chips. I think I'm going to start with the larger LEDs again just because I want to uh, practice with something that's not quite so squinty. However, with the LEDs, something that I do have to figure out is the polarity of them. There isn't really an indicator on the back of these ones but the front of them does have a notch in one corner. 
However, I don't know what that means. Is that the anode or the cathode? Because there's no data sheet with these. Okay, so the little angly bit is the negative side, the cathode. And it looks like a white LED. This thing won't display uh, forward voltage for anything over about two and a half volts. So being a white LED, it's not going to tell me. But being a white LED, we also know that it's probably going to be about three volts. So if that is the negative side, the cathode, and we have that marking on there, it means the side with the little angly bit cut out goes to the bottom. I'm hoping that these are going to be the easiest pieces to solder on here so far because they are the biggest ones. And normally I would start with the biggest ones, but since these are a semiconductor, I didn't want to you know, destroy them when I was still really, really not practiced at the stuff. So let's just try this. Okay, it's in place. Get the second side just since I'm in the neighborhood and then I'll bang through the rest of them. Hmm, that actually looks reasonable. I'm moderately pleased with that joint. Yeah, some of those joints are above the average. I'll accept that. Right, so now we have these smaller LEDs that go down here. They aren't marked for polarity. Well, they kind of are. There's this double bar at the bottom of them. I think that's a polarity marking. So same drill. We'll test these guys out and see where their anode and cathode are hiding. Although there is this marking on the back. So I'm going to assume that in this one, the bottom is the anode and the top is the cathode. Okay, 1.8 volts and it looks red. Okay, my assumption was correct. There's another clue that I can see, and I'm not sure whether you can see it, but this bottom row here is all bust together and going to the negative. So that is pretty obviously the cathode side. And these resistors are on the anode side. But these also being bussed together makes it hard to solder because they absorb a lot of heat just from that large chunk of copper. just the two larger chips which are I hope going to be less of a challenge than these resistor arrays but they are still going to be challenging now this one is the 74 HC 138 and it goes over there let's just quickly tin up one of the corner pads I'm just going to pick this corner because it's convenient so pin one is in this corner of the footprint. You can see the dot there, and pin one of the chip is over here. You can see the dot. Um, so when I do this, I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Hmm. Why do these things keep wanting to flip upside down? Why, why, why? Is this something to do with the physics of buttered toast or cats or something? Yeah, those all look in alignment. So now I'll tack down pin one since that's diagonally opposite the one that I soldered at first. Come on, come on. Why won't you take there? That was far more time and more heat than I wanted to put on that pad. But it's definitely down. So now my usual manner of soldering multi-pin devices that can get damaged by heat and I'm going to spread the heat around while I'm soldering this so one there and then one over 
here, and I'll just keep doing that all the way around until they're all tied down. And hopefully don't have any excess of solder on them. Okay, I think I've got that one all done. And they look like, well, they look like they're all connected anyway. Some of them are a little blobby, but they are all connected. And hopefully I didn't spend too much time lingering with the heat on them. And now the final one, which should be the CD4060. And indeed it is. Even got a real Texas Instruments logo on it. That doesn't guarantee it's not counterfeit, of course, but whatever. Who would counterfeit an ancient chip like this? Uh, the bar on the left-hand side indicates that this pin down here is pin 1. And as before, the dot indicates pin 1 on the footprint. So I will, just like I've done a dozen times before on this board, I will tin one pad and then try and align the chip and stick it down. That was the fastest one yet. I've got contacts and everything. Yeah, after only, what, 200 or so joints? I'm moderately proud of what that one looks like. So now we'll just add a couple of power wires to it and answer the question on everybody's mind, including my own. Does it actually work? Let's guess five volts just to start with. Current limit of, let's put it a little bit lower than that. Let's try maybe, yeah, maybe 100-ish milliamps. I don't want the thing to explode. Power on. It's only drawing 17 milliamps. Hey, look at that. Something's happening. These LEDs down here seem to be sort of counting in binary. At least some of them are. That one works. That one works. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those two don't work. Okay. Question now is, how am I going to troubleshoot this thing without a schematic? And how am I going to tell where the problem is? Because I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, I've got these things fixed. The only problem was one of these bodge wires that I put in here was messing up, um, I guess, the last three LEDs. So despite all odds, despite my crappy soldering, although I think you saw at the end I was starting to get a little bit better, despite all that, despite not having a schematic, not knowing what I'm doing, I still managed to create a functional circuit with only really a couple of screw-ups. One being having the hot air turn too high and blowing that uh, resistor array into oblivion. I still haven't found it. Um, and one being not having one of those bodge wires soldered down properly. Other than that, I got a lot of practice on surface mount, which is something that I sorely need. And I've got a little circuit board that actually does something out of the deal. That's pretty cool. I didn't destroy it. Life is good. Well, if you've got anything to say about this, and I'm sure there's lots of people that will have an opinion about my soldering, um, leave your comments down below as always. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.